Today, I'm challenging myself to recreate real quicksand and other sand-related natural disasters using LEGO. Let's get started. To understand how quicksand forms, I built this unique setup with a small glass cube right at the center. Inside, there's a simple yet effective mechanism that shifts the aquarium from side to side, creating a series of vibrations. Essentially, it's a LEGO earthquake generator. <laughs> yeah, boy. Using the electric motor and controller, I can vary the intensity of the vibrations, simulating different earthquake magnitudes. But before we dive into testing quicksand, let's put some LEGO structures through a simulated earthquake and see how they hold up under the tremor. <laughs> how will this LEGO building hold up against an earthquake? Let's find out. As the shaking intensifies, you can see the buildings crumble completely, leaving the poor minifigures inside with nowhere to hide. Definitely not an ideal day for them. Alright, now it's time to move on to the main experiment. For this, we'll need sand and plenty of it. The sand slipping away grain by grain is a reminder of its ever-changing, unpredictable nature. We pour it into the aquarium, spreading it out evenly across the entire base. Once the sand is ready, we place our test objects on top, which include minifigures, cars, and a few small buildings. Then we fire up the earthquake generator to see if anything gets pulled into the sand. But as you'll notice, not much happens. The minifigures just tip over, while the buildings and cars stay firmly planted on the surface. No one is sinking into the sandy ground. Why does this happen? Well, vibrating the sand actually reduces the friction between particles, breaking down its otherwise dense structure. Without this support, objects on the surface usually start to sink as the sand flows around them. However, since LEGO is made from ABS plastic, a bit less than the density of dry sand, it floats rather than sinks. That density difference keeps the LEGO objects on the surface. To test this theory, I brought in a 2-pound dumbbell, which has more weight than the plastic objects. And sure enough, the vibration causes the dumbbell to gradually sink. Maybe we need stronger vibrations to make the LEGO pieces sink. So I assembled a vibration mechanism with an off-center tip on the motor that generates high-frequency vibrations. When we place this mechanism on top of the sand, we start to see the sand shake, almost like it's turning into a liquid. We bury it under the sand and place a minifigure on top, then switch it on. The vibration makes it impossible for the figure to stand upright, but interestingly, it doesn't sink. Even the mechanism itself rises to the surface despite being buried. The car similarly doesn't sink, which tells us we might need a different approach. There's a closely related effect to quicksand called soil liquefaction, where water helps make the ground lose its support. This time, I mixed water into the sand and poured a layer of dry sand on top. Placing a Lego house, car, and minifigure on this unstable surface, we start up the vibration mechanism. As the wet sand mixes with the dry layer, you can see the water seeping up. The ground loosens and objects start sinking, as if the sand has lost all stability. Sure enough, all our test subjects get pulled under the surface. A similar effect can happen with groundwater. To simulate this, I built a structure under the sand that leaves a hollow space. I added a Lego city above, with small buildings, cars, and minifigures. As water slowly fills the void below, Low, simulating a heavy rainfall or flooding, it starts to erode the sand, causing the buildings and figures to sink. And when I add some earthquake action to speed things up, the result is like a mini tsunami. It's mesmerizing how something so simple can create such a beautiful flowing motion. The sand settles and water fills in, making it clear that even solid ground can be deceiving. Sand doesn't just pull things in, it can also cover objects from above like an avalanche. I arrange the sand in a hill shape and place test objects at the base. With the earthquake activated, the sand starts to crumble downwards, gradually burying the figures. Some of them get completely covered with just a tiny portion, maybe an outline of a head left showing. Talk about being stuck. Are you okay? Bruh. In desert environments, sandstorms are another way sand engulfs everything in its path. To replicate a sandstorm with Lego, I created a long actuator with a propeller at the end. This makeshift fan will blow sand across the aquarium, simulating the harshness of a real sandstorm. To up the ante, I added a second motor, making the fan spin faster and creating a mini hurricane inside the aquarium. 
what happens to the minifigures in this sand madness? Let's take a look at that. Tiny grains of sand hit our poor minifigures from all sides, littering and scraping them as they try to stand their ground. In the end, the storm pulls everything right to the center, leaving them no escape. split the minifigures apart. I don't know what could be a more dangerous disaster than this, or do I? For the last experiment, I'll need a lot more sand and space. After all, I will now need to build a huge sand dam. Behind the dam, there will be a massive Lego city with inhabitants and transportation. Finally, for the grand finale, I built a large sand dam in a big aquarium, creating a barrier in front of a whole Lego city. In this experiment, we will simulate a sand dam breach and see the consequences of such a catastrophe for the city. The experiment? To see if this sand dam can protect the city from a flood. Sand dams like these are sometimes used to help keep flood water from populated areas, but I'm going to test if they can actually hold up. We start filling one side of the aquarium with water, and at first the dam holds steady. But as the water rises, we can see it starting to seep through the sand. Slowly, the top of the dam begins to slide, cracks appear, and some of the minifigures standing on the dam are swept into the water. Finally, the entire dam collapses, flooding the Lego city. Just look at this footage in close-up. A huge mass of water blows away everything in its path. It's a full-on disaster. The city is submerged, proving that a sand dam may not be the best choice for flood prevention after all. And there you have it, a whole series of sand experiments. These tests illustrate just how much liquefaction, earthquakes, and other natural forces can impact objects on the surface. Let me know in the comments what other disasters you'd like to see recreated in LEGO. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Wait, 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 wait.